Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on a previous episode, I just bought a brand new Windows 10 laptop. It was inexpensive and very low power. And so one of the things I was concerned about is whether or not I could actually run Linux with inside a virtual machine on this computer. And as you can see here, I am actually running Linux Mint. And it's actually Linux Mint 18.3 XFCE and so the reason why I chose XFCE is because it was a lot lighter weight desktop environment and as you can see here things are running great now before I get any further into this let me show you what I'm working with on my actual Windows 10 machine so let's go ahead and go out here and here in the settings so here it is running an AMD A6 processor with the integrated Radeon R4 for graphics running at 1.6 gigahertz it has 4 gigs of RAM, 2 gigs of which is actually being used for my virtual machine right now. And then in terms of storage, it's pretty bad. Um, it actually has a 32 gig EMMC, basically flash memory. And I haven't really installed anything on this and I only have 3 gigs left. And as a matter of fact, a Windows 10 update came and the computer wasn't able to update because I ran out of space. And so what I had to do was I had to purchase a 64 gig micro SD card and then after that, I had to go into the Windows registry and change the directory where my programs were to be installed. Yeah, uh, definitely not a fan of using Windows as my primary OS, but this is something that I needed for my clients and work. And so with all of that being said, I am very impressed with the performance that I'm getting within the virtual machine. So let me show you just a quick example of the performance difference. And so let me go ahead and start a Firefox in Windows 10. And it's not slow, I wouldn't say, you know, it's still very usable. But as you can see, there is definitely some wait time. And so there it is, Firefox came up. Uh, no problem, you know, things come up. And so not a bad wait at all, okay? So let's go ahead and close this. And now let's go back into our Linux Mint XFCE virtual machine. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and start Firefox. So let's go ahead and do that. And the startup time, I would say, is almost the same, maybe a little quicker. And what's most impressive about that is this is running inside a virtual machine. That is crazy, you know, and it goes to show that Linux, when it comes to performance and so many other things, but just something you can see right away, look how fast that is, everything's smooth. I am very, very impressed by what the Linux Mint team was able to do with XFCE. And also, it's not just things like Firefox, okay? And so, I know that I could browse the web within this virtual machine, no problems at all, okay? But I could also do other things as well. So, if I needed to do Office-related stuff, here's LibreOffice Writer right here. Comes up just fine, no problems. And then, even if I did needed to do graphic stuff, more intensive stuff, here's GIMP. And there it is, came up just fine. Really not much wait at all for the actual program to come up. And then, you know, even if I needed to do, you know, any other multimedia stuff, I got everything that I would normally use. About the only thing that might be lacking uh, actually within this virtual machine is if I wanted to do like video editing or screen records that's probably definitely not something that this machine <laughs> can handle but as you can see here for just everyday work this is more than usable and so this is something that i was very concerned about whenever i got this machine because i did not want to use windows 10 only and so having a linux mint here and extremely usable very happy about that and this is really my first time using Linux Mint XFCE edition and so this was something that I was not used to but it's not that much different from Cinnamon and like I said earlier the best part about it is it performs really well and it's quote unquote less bloated than most other uh, Linux desktop environments and that's funny to say because when you compare this to something like a Windows you know it's it's really hard to compare the two, you know, when it comes to performance, because this runs so much better. And so that is it for this particular episode. I just wanted to show you quickly how, you know, Linux Mint is running just fine within this very, you know, low power machine. So that's something that I was concerned about. And I'm happy to say I don't have to be concerned anymore. And so if you are a person who does have a low power 
Windows 10 machine and you wanted to run Linux Mint in a virtual machine and you might be concerned about performance, well don't be. As I'm showing you here, I have a Windows 10 laptop that cost me $130 and as you could probably tell by the specs I just showed you, uh, that's really nothing there to really be excited about, you know, and probably smartphones are almost as powerful as this now. But overall, very impressed by this performance and so it makes me happy that I'm able to still run Linux within this particular Windows 10 environment. And so if you had any thoughts on anything that I showed today, then be sure to leave in the comments area below. So as always, if you did enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe and if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you actually wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then join my Go Content Creators Group where you will get access to 30 free videos and more continuing content for all their creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is all of this is free. All you have to do is simply go to the link below, head over to our page and join my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks a lot and I will see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content, audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.